Can you see all those dark objects? They are like dirty snowballs. They are comets. Good luck to us all. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. Zero. Have ignition. This week at NASA. I'd like to go ahead and welcome uh, a new member to our team here. This is... Uh... I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Why? Welcome to the latest episode of Asteroid Fight Club. I gotta take Fight Club up a notch. How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Wait. Stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. This is space. There's space all over the place. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. I am the Indiana Jones of astronomy. And here we go. Oh my god, it is total doom again. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about giant comets from the Kuiper Belt pose a real threat to Earth. Dash dash, NASA's new Horizon spacecraft to probe these outer reaches. It's doom. Doom, I tell ya. And if you'll remember, comets are magical cat dragon dirty snowball deep fried primordial ice cream that look like magic flaming lollipops in the sky. You see, a decade ago, Stephen Hawking warned that one of the major factors in the possible scarcity of intelligent life in our galaxy is the high probability of an asteroid or comet colliding with inhabited planets. Well, if they were so smart, how come they couldn't figure out how to steer those comets away or annihilate them with their sonic beams, railguns that shoot giant bolts of ice? Or just lasers, man. When you invent peace lasers, you shoot it at anything that isn't peaceful and it goes away. So let's get on that. This past December, a team of astronomers from Armaga Observatory and the University of Buckingham reported that the discovery of hundreds of giant comets in the outer planetary system over the last two decades mean that these objects pose a much greater hazard to life than asteroids. Okay, so you got hundreds of giant comets ice skating around the outer planetary systems. Now these don't sound that threatening. Unless some Planet Nine or a Herculubus, Tachi, and Nemesis a Destroyer comes along and knocks them all into the inner solar system like bowling pins after a strike. But either way, remember, astronomy doom is at this point sheer fantasy. The real doom is in economics and how humans communicate with each other. Giant comets, termed centaurs, move on unstable orbits crossing the paths of the massive outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Hold up! I got a question. Because it seems like every comet we ever see that comes around into the inner solar system, they're always tiny, small, with a nucleus under a mile. What is the actual definition of a giant comet? Oh, I see. That will be answered in the next sentence. The planetary gravitational fields can occasionally deflect these objects in towards Earth. Centaurs are typically 50 to 100 kilometers across, or larger, and a single such body contains more mass than the entire population of Earth crossing asteroids found to date. Man, don't cross Earth. The people on it are vindictive. But because these half-man, half-horse asteroid comets appear as pinpricks of light, even in the largest telescopes, because they are so distant from Earth, Saturn's 200-kilometer moon Phoebe, depicted in this image, seems likely to be a centaur that was captured by the seems likely to be a centaur that was captured by that planet's gravity at some time in the past. Until spacecraft are sent to visit other centaurs, our best idea of what they look like comes from images like this one, obtained by the Cassini space probe orbiting Saturn, which is about to go belly up, give up the ghost, and nuke the planet of the Black Cube. That's interesting. I'll make a video on that later. NASA's new Horizon spacecraft having flown past Pluto six months ago, has been targeted to conduct an approach to a 45-kilometer-wide trans-Neptunian object at the end of 2018. Man, how come all the cool science is set for 2018? We get jack shit in 2016. Calculations of the rate at which centaurs enter the inner solar system indicate that one will be deflected onto a path crossing the Earth's orbit about once every 40,000 to 100,000 years. Whilst in near-Earth space, they're expected to disintegrate into dust and larger fragments, flooding the inner solar system with cometary debris and making impacts on our planet inevitable. Man, for a doomy article, this one is trade boring. Known severe upsets of the terrestrial environment and interruptions in the progress of ancient civilizations, together with our growing knowledge of interplanetary matter in near-Earth space, 
indicate the arrival of a centaur around 30,000 years ago. Dun dun dun. Hey, wait, that means we ain't gotta worry about nothing for 10,000 more years. Why am I even reading this article? This giant comet would have strewn the interplanetary system with debris ranging in size from dust all the way up to butt lumps several kilometers across. Specific episodes of environmental upheaval around 10,800 before Christ Everlasting and 2300 before Christ Everlasting, identified by geologists and paleontologists, are also consistent with this new understanding of cometary populations. Why don't we send a probe out there instead of like the 100 thingy to Mars? Just an idea. Some of the greatest mass extinctions in the distant past, for example, the death of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, may similarly be associated with this giant comet hypothesis. Great. In the last three decades, we have invested a lot of effort in tracking and analyzing the risk of a collision between Earth and an asteroid, said Bill Nepier of the University of Buckingham. Our work suggests we need to look beyond our immediate neighborhood, too, and look out beyond the orbit of Jupiter to find centaurs. If we are right, then these distant comets could be a serious hazard, bro, and it's time to understand them better. Why don't we send them a questionnaire that they can fill out? Let us know more about them. The researchers have also uncovered evidence from disparate fields of science in support of their model. For example, the ages of the submillimeter craters identified in lunar rocks returned in the Apollo program are almost all younger than 30,000 years, indicating a vast enhancement in the amount of dust in the inner solar system since then. Indicating a vast enhancement in the amount of dust in the inner solar system since then. The outer solar system as we now recognize it. What? At the center of the map is the sun. At close to it, the tiny orbits of the terrestrial planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. <sighs> Moving outwards and shown in bright blue are the near circular paths of the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The orbit of Pluto is shown in white. Staying perpetually beyond Neptune are the trans-Neptunian objects in yellow. 17 TNO orbits are shown here, with the total discovered population at present being over 1,500. Shown in red are the orbits of 22 centaurs out of about 400 known objects, and these are essentially giant comets. Most are 50 to 100 kilometers in size but some are several hundred km in diameter. Wow, that looks like a crowded place for your face. Who's Cito? Citobin. Man, this article bore me so much my eyes are starting to bleed. Because the centaurs cross the paths of the major planets, their orbits are unstable. Some will eventually be ejected from the solar system, but others will be thrown onto trajectories, bringing them inwards. Therefore, posing a danger to civilization and life as we know it on Earth. All right, total doom. Total doom! Following the historic first ever flyby of Pluto, NASA's New Horizons mission received the green light in July to fly onward to an object deeper in the Kuiper Belt, known as 2014 MU-69. Why does that sound familiar? Moo. 69. So <laughs> oh god. I just told a much funnier joke, but I cut it. Okay, the spacecraft's planned rendezvous with the ancient object, considered one of the early building blocks of the solar system, is January 1st, 2019. Oh man, who can wait that long? Oh man, who can wait that long? The New Horizons mission to Pluto exceeded our expectations, and even today, the data from the spacecraft continued to surprise, said NASA's Director of Planetary Science, Jim Green. We are excited to continue onward into the dark depths of the outer solar system, to a science target that wasn't even discovered when the spacecraft launched. Well, hell yeah, this article is boring and we could all die from giant comets that are shaped like men and horses. That is fantastic news, ladies and gentlemen. Another possible thing that could destroy life on planet Earth as we know it. So, grab your girl and kiss her like you were dying tomorrow. Go eat some eggs. Eat way more bacon than you wanted to. Smoke some cigarettes. And whatever else, you know. Okay, this one is pretty boring. Man, for being all doomy, this one was pretty doomless. Uh, sorry about that. But remember, centaurs, they could be coming to kick your ass with horse hooves and then laugh at you in the human face. Even though they're comments. It's really weird, huh? All right. Peace out. God bless everyone. Talk to you soon, I hope.